as architects, my partner, Carol Schmidt, and I receive challenging proposals. But none was more odd than the email from Fake Design in 2007, inviting us, on behalf of a mysterious developer, to participate in a major architectural project in China. In spite of its name, this fake was real, and so was the offer. To travel to China's Inner Mongolia and design a dream mansion for one of the new Chinese millionaires. A 1,000 square meters villa in Kangbashi, a new city that barely existed. The project was called Ordos 100. Architects from 27 countries accepted to design 100 dream mansions. The project stretched our skills as we tried to create a signature development for a town that didn't then exist. And it introduced us to one of the most charismatic artists of our time. Ordos 100 was all part of a grandiose plan to replicate the Bilbao effect. The fantastic push this Spanish city received thanks to Frank Gehry's Guggenheim Museum. So we went along willingly and became enthusiastic advocates for this plan. On reflection, I can now see that the real genius was not the construction, not at all. It was the creation from absolutely nothing of an incredible social media buzz, fueled by architecture, our own architecture. Unfortunately, the plan is no longer known for the mansions of our dreams, and no concrete has ever been poured. Kangbashi is a ghost town. It's become the, the, the symbol of excessive planning and a forewarning for what could come if China's boom turns to bust. And yet, and this is the most curious point of all, through clever use of social media, these mansions in the sky achieve their real goal, to put the new city of Kangbashi on the map. Ordos 100 was meant to become a very special neighborhood. In the middle of a region of steppe, surrounded by the Yellow River and the Great Wall. 800 kilometers, 500 miles west of Beijing. The initial plans were astonishing. The 100 villas would form an elite residential community dedicated to millionaires and an outdoor museum of iconic architecture. Now, this pitch contained a crucial contradiction. It was mixing the concept of a cultural quarter, nothing new there, with a neighborhood for the very rich, who usually shy away from prying eyes of tourists and crowds. The gap between the existing desert landscape and the image of a completely green future city excited us. The unconditional commission encouraged us to really write our blueprints like fiction. To give the fiction more realism, we conducted a lot of research on the taste of the Chinese new rich, their lifestyles, the way they receive guests. We even invented our ideal buyer, a couple of creative entrepreneurs. Now, their mansion would be a showpiece home, but also a place to work, display art, organize events. The shape of the building was voluptuous and the interior incredibly generous and flexible. We designed every detail, a house both domestic and professional. Now, if we are being honest, we also included many of the touches we would have wanted in our own dream home. The fiction of the 100 villas seemed not to be related to any specific context. In fact, it was rooted in a pseudo-international congress of contemporary architecture. 
200 architects came from all over the world to a hotel located half an hour from the future town of Kangbashi. We were amongst the enthusiastic guinea pigs of this unique laboratory experiment. The press played a central role in the project from the very start. By ensuring strong media presence at our Congress, including Western reporters who were facilitated to attend, the organizers set out to draw attention to Ordos 100. The architects also helped promote the project by writing about it on their own blogs and by staging exhibitions of their design back in their hometowns, like New York or Basel. This all contributed to what I would describe as a quite innovative urban planning buzz. This great event was organized by Fake Design, the architectural company of the Chinese artist Ai Weiwei. Although he would become even more famous later, at the time, Ai Weiwei was known for working with architects Herzog and de Meuron on Beijing's Olympic Stadium. In the art world, he was perceived as a charming provocateur in the tradition of Marcel Duchamp and Andy Warhol. When we collaborated, <clears throat> Ai Weiwei had already mastered global social, social media networks. A few months before the Ordos project, for example, he invited 1,001 Chinese people of all ages and all backgrounds to come to Germany and live their own European fairy tale for 28 days. He photographed everything and made a documentary. In Ordos, he did the same. And recently, he presented Ordos 100, the movie, which is now visible on the internet. If you watch it, you will feel the excitement, hesitation, and seriousness of the participants at the beginning. You will see how the desire to believe and fun quickly took root, and how we became willing spokespersons for the so-called artistic freedom and absence of context advocated by the organizers. Deploying his tremendous charisma, Ai Weiwei managed to submit this bunch of individualist individualistic architects to his own ironic media controls. So that was the master plan. I don't think it really mattered if Ordos 100 was built. The fact is that we were part of a fascinating piece of conceptual art, using every tool of modern communications. I believe that this project means a lot to Ai Weiwei, even as he became a global icon of resistance against the authoritarian regime of his country and was imprisoned for almost three months in 2011. The artist dissident was working on a huge sculpture based on the Ordos 100 scheme. In Ai Weiwei's solo show at the Kunsthaus Bregenz in Austria last year, the Ordos installation was the major attraction. But Ordos 100 was not only a piece of urban design, not only a work of art. It was part of a massive and long-term branding strategy. With our fellow architects, including Ai Weiwei, we were hired by the developer. We'd like to think for our skills and experience, but actually, for what we represented, our use and ability to project ideas across borders. We became the ambassadors of an urban brand made from scratch, the latest of the new Asian cities and possibly the most ambitious. But Ordos 100 was only the beginning. In early 2009, the project Ordos 20 plus 10, with a majority of Chinese architects, supplemented the concept of the villas with offices, hotels, and apartment residences. Next, please. Next. Then, a few months later, the Ordos Prize was launched. 
the first international award for architecture in Asia. And the jury was headed by Rem Korhas in person. All these projects were episodes intended to create a narrative, a, controvers a controversy, the announcement of a great process to follow. At the end of 2009, our construction drawings were ready. We, we even had been paid. We were waiting to follow the construction from our offices in Europe. But suddenly, the developer disappeared and all his projects were stopped. What happened? To be honest, I don't really know. I hear rumors, but I have no idea where he can be. If you've met, I mean you, this visionary developer from Ordos 100 recently, or if you know where he is, I'd be really, really glad if you could tell me. So what remains of Ordos? What exactly was behind this branding strategy? Ordos is the name of this old Mongolian territory, twice the size of Switzerland, but only since 2001. Until then, the name was mostly famous in China as a local brand of Kashmir sweaters. So what was the objective? To compete with cities such as Shenzhen and Shanghai, to establish Ordos as the new reference point for 21st century Chinese urbanism. And the laboratory of this ambition was Kangbashi, the new town. In Kangbashi, the elite Ordos 100 design we invested with our dreams has not been built, but instead mass-produced government buildings and enormous housing complexes sprung up. A desperate landscape of austere buildings and vacant units. Because inner Mongolian people resisted moving there. And Kangbashi has now become the poster child in the global media as a ghost town. Today, the city could already house more than 300,000 people, but only a tenth of that number actually live there. That's how Ordos became the symbol of a possible Chinese housing bubble. Since 2010, photographers and economic analysts willing to make a strong impression on their audience about the threatening property market in China always refer to Ordos. The region is not empty, though. It has almost one and a half million inhabitants, including a quarter of a million in a city called Dongsheng, 25 kilometers north of Kangbashi. Dongsheng is a friendly city with a popular marketplace. I can perfectly understand why so few wish to leave it for a ghost town. But it's surrounded by coal plants. The air is polluted. The water table is destroyed. And the landscape is devastated by erosion. This picture, next, please. Next. This picture brings to light the natural power behind the strange dynamics of this territory. Ordos is the richest region in fossil fuels in the whole Republic of China. In my opinion, the construction of the new town was mainly motivated by the need of a short-term outlet for the masses of capital generated by the exploitation of natural resources, an alternative to losing this money from region. And furthermore, the quality of life in is degrading so seriously in Dongshan that using all possible means, including fiction, to make this alternative city more attractive appears, in fact, reasonable. So, using architecture to place provincial cities on the world map and attract visitors is a well-known strategy since the 90s. And the building we are now in is a very good example of that strategy. Politicians everywhere would love to reproduce this Guggenheim-Bilbao effect. But the case of Ordos is different. It was not only trying to attract tourists. It wanted to create an international discussion around a non-existing city. 
in order to give it a semblance of quality without waiting for it to be actually constructed. It was not necessary to build our mansions for them to reach their goal. Because of its utopian character, I believe that this project has a potential to become a milestone in the history of contemporary architecture. We will talk of the Ordos effect in the future. The Ordos effect marks the passage from the fully constructed building to the media device, from urban project to buzz urbanism, to attract and seduce. Buzz urbanism challenges our imaginations with concepts that are fascinating precisely because they seem impossible. And it relies on a large network of creators instead of the usual star architects. Of course, I am a little sorry that our villa will remain a virtu virtual project forever. But my dreams of Ordos, as an interesting concept for the future of architecture, are probably more real than if the mansion had ever been built. And, by the way, in case anyone is interested and owes a piece of desert somewhere, we still have the blueprints of the villa. <laughs> Thank you.